Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. It's amazing how just forgetting to do one small little thing, the minuscule amount of time it takes to grab your house keys and toss them in your bag, can lead to huge problems or pain. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Left out in the snow. So about two years ago, I lived in an off-campus apartment with two other girls. I got along really well with one girl, let's call her Alice. I didn't, however, get along with my other roommate who we'll call Heather. Both me and Heather were friends with Alice, but we didn't know each other prior to moving in together. When we first moved in, I made an effort to befriend Heather, or at the very least have a pleasant relationship with her. However, Heather would always brush me off and would only talk to me if she felt like she absolutely had to, i.e. bills, rent, etc. The house was always tense and I was never able to be comfortable because of the poor relationship with Heather. I would frequently talk about this with Alice and I'd come to find out that Heather was complaining to Alice about me. She would complain that I was irresponsible, never contributed to the apartment, like buying toilet paper, that I was ugly, fat, etc. Out of the three of us, I was certainly the bigger one. However, I was still a healthy size. Alice didn't agree with what Heather was saying because I did contribute and always paid my share of bills and rent on time. Alice also didn't like that Heather was talking crap about me to not just her, but to other people from school. She talked so much crap about me that her friends hated me, and when they met me, they were like, WTF, you're so nice. Heather said you were a B. But that's another story. After three months of this, I tried to address the issues with Heather and try to create a relationship with her, but Heather said she liked our current relationship and had no intentions of having open dialogue with me. Basically, I had to suck it up and just accept the fact that this was how I was going to live until the lease was up. Alice hated being the middleman between us and tried to convince Heather to at least talk to me because, duh, we lived together. Heather vehemently refused, and that was that. This went on for a dreadful year. It was winter, classes had started, and there was quite a bit of snow which caused significant delays in public transport. I'd gotten home after my classes at around 3 p.m. and decided to take a nap to recover from the hell of ridiculously crowded trains. I wake up to the doorbell ringing and I look at my phone to see the time, 4 p.m., and notice I have missed messages from Heather. Apparently she had forgotten her house key that morning and had no way of getting into the apartment. Alice was at work and wouldn't get home until around midnight, and Heather wanted to know if I was home. I laid there and thought about the past year and Heather's treatment towards me. I'd had enough and decided to get back at her a little. I told her I wasn't home and didn't know when I would get home because I was out with friends and the delays were horrible. I then went about my business and didn't come home until 9 p.m. According to Alice, Heather told her she'd stayed outside our apartment door for an hour trying to see if the landlord could stop by and unlock the door for her. When that didn't work, Heather spent the other four hours at a coffee shop whose lights went out three hours in due to the snow and then stayed at the local corner store. I didn't tell Alice I'd done this, but I certainly did when they had a fallout and we all moved out three months later, which she high-fived me for. And our second story. Please stop demanding I come to your house and watch your kids for free right now. A few years ago, as a younger and naiver teenager, I began babysitting occasionally for free for a single mother who lived in my neighborhood. She and my, at the time, foster mother were acquaintances, and she'd mentioned badly needing a babysitter so she could go to a weekly doctor's appointment she had, but struggling to afford one. Especially since, as I'd learned later, her three previous sitters had all quit. I was voluntold, and it seemed like a reasonable kind thing to do, so I was happy enough to go along with it, and then to babysit so she could go do some errands. And then it spiraled from there, to the point that I was often coming over on Saturday and babysitting for 10, 12, even 14 hours, and watching them one evening during the week as well, or watching them on Friday night, and for a few hours on two different weekdays, I was never paid for any of this. And this was not easy babysitting. She had three young children, two-year-old, four-year-old, and eight-year-old, and the eight-year-old boy had significant special needs. He ran away while I babysat repeatedly, and I'd have to chase him down while carrying his two-year-old brother in my arms. Most days that I babysat, I'd have to physically hold him back from hitting himself or his siblings the entire time. 
It was grueling work as a babysitter. I'd often have bruises on my legs and arms at the end of the day from him kicking and biting me because I was standing in front of the door to keep him from running away. I wouldn't have minded as much if I felt like the things I did were appreciated, but I didn't. I'd sometimes get a thank you, but I'd also usually get a lot of criticism over the flaws in the way I babysat. I was accused of stealing food from them, which I never did. I just ate food while I was there, watching children for free for 12 hours at a time. I actually started bringing packed lunches to her house instead. She accused me of stealing money and stealing her phone, only for both to turn up later. She'd just misplaced them. She complained that I favored her four-year-old over her eight-year-old, which I don't think was true. But if she was so dissatisfied with my babysitting, maybe she should have hired someone else. She complained whenever I was late. Translate that as, I agreed to come over when I woke up on Saturday, but I was sleeping in a bit on the weekend, or I said I'd come over after school, but my school bus takes a while to reach my neighborhood since it's the last stop. She told me that if I got another babysitting job, I'd be fired if I were late. Obviously, yeah, that's true, but this wasn't a job. It was just doing someone a favor. And I was always prompt for appointments. The only time I was looser was when she had vague errands to run. And if she wants to talk about late, she was never home when she said she'd be. She'd ask me to watch the kids for a few hours so she could go to an eye appointment or so she could get groceries, but not be back till late. One time her youngest was sick, vomiting, and crying for his mother, and when I called her and begged her to come home, she outright refused. I know I should have been more firm in my refusals, but when I said no, she'd send like 20 lengthy texts trying to convince me to change my mind, which is hard to stand up to when you're young. If I was sick, she'd tell me the kids would be quiet. I could lay down on their couch. She had canned chicken soup and would heat up some for me. It'd be fine. She had arguments against any excuse I made. She also threw me scraps of affection that, in hindsight, she obviously didn't mean. She'd say she saw me as another child and things like that, which meant a lot to me, as though most of my three years I babysat her kids for, I was living in a group home. I never knew my parents, so any affection from adults meant a great deal to me. I feel like she took advantage of how lonely and vulnerable I was as a child to coerce me into doing a great deal of free labor for her while criticizing how I did it all the while. She even asked me repeatedly to skip school to babysit. The last straw came when I was quite ill. I was struggling with very severe anemia, like blood infusion level anemia, so I tended to sleep in. She knew that I was sick and tended to wake up at around 11 o'clock because I'd been coming over at around then every Saturday, although she'd always complain I should have come earlier, even when we agreed that I'd be there at around 11.30. I'd agreed to walk over and babysit on Saturday when I woke up so she could go on a date with a guy she'd been seeing for a few weeks. I woke up the next morning to the sound of someone banging on my door and blurrily opened it to find a guy I'd literally never seen before. Apparently he was her date, and she'd had him walk over to find out why I was late. This was an hour before my usual wake-up time. I got dressed in less than five minutes and did babysit that day. She came back at around 11 p.m., but all I could think that day was how unfair it was to come to someone's home and demand their free labor sooner. The next day, I texted her that I was falling behind in school and couldn't babysit anymore, then I blocked her number. That woman clearly is delusional, manipulative, and downright abusing. Very happy you got out of that situation. And our last story. I'm moving in with an unpaying tenant. I'm a 38-year-old landlord of very few single-family rentals. One of the rentals is an old beaten up trailer from 1955 that I rented to a woman a couple years ago. I purchased the property for the land and was upfront about my intentions with the trailer right from the beginning. I put the bare minimum of work into this trailer, but it's an affordable place to live for now. I charged her $600 a month and made sure she had working electric, water, hot water, heat, etc. The roof was old and leaking and I've tarred over some leaks in the past couple years a couple of times. I told her when it comes time for a major repair, it would not be cost effective to do it, and I'd be removing the trailer and placing a modular home there. Fast forward to last month. She informed me that there was a roof leak and needed more tar. Upon inspection, it's no longer feasible to keep repairing, and it'd need an entire new roof. Well, it's not cost effective to replace the new roof, so I told her she'd need to find other housing. She proceeded to play the eviction ban card and has refused to leave, or pay, even the $600. I had my lawyer send her the non-habitable letter and tell her to leave by September 15th. 
She's not paid September rent and has not mowed the lawn since getting the letter or left. So yesterday I went over there, walked in, and started living. She called the police on me, and when they came, I showed them all the paperwork and told the officer that she's right, I cannot legally evict her, but I'm not evicting her. She's living for free and needs to pay for exclusive use of the house. If she does not pay for exclusivity, then she's my vagrant roommate. The officer sided with me and told her that there's nothing they can do to make either of us leave. It's a civil matter unless something physical or threats of violence occur. She's absolutely pissed. Says I'm a scumbag a-hole, even though I've given her the most affordable housing in the area for almost three years now. Lot rent in local mobile home parks is over $500 a month, and you need to pay for the trailer and have neighbors. This is on its own acre plot. I no doubt think I'm in the right here. Someone's living on my property and not paying anything. I have every right to use said property. I know many landlords who would change the locks while she isn't home and risk the charge. I didn't do it that way. I even told her if she kept paying $600, I'd let her stay. But you're renting the land, not the house. I can't keep losing money to fix something for someone else to live. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.